international law because they really don't want our people capable of interfacing with the international community because they are declared stateless persons or are clear. This is why the Negro, Black, and Colored brands are in place that designate stateless persons because there's no such existing nations on earth planet. Those are clearly brands set up by the Dutch masters, particularly, and reinforced since 1779 from the East Indies Dutch company operating at North America to distinguish their property from free men. So when you're talking about free men, you're talking about it on the surface, immediately, people who have international law protections and they will have a nationality. As an example, it has nothing to do with skin complexion, it has to do with your nativity and the fact that you're part of the human family recognized by the rest of the nations of the earth. And this is why all major cities on earth planet will have the different vexillum or flags, national standards that represent the different mothers on earth planet called nations and nationalities. And the laws that come together in civilization that protect the rights of the human family are called constitutions, and they emanate from nations, which is why they're called international law. So to remove the heirs of the great estate from international law protections, they remove the nationality. How do you know it? Because those are the only people that walk around calling human beings crayons and think it's an identity. Then that's reinforced by people who they respect. You know, who say Jesus, God, Allah, Moses, and Muhammad, and stuff like that, and then, then they turn around and call you black man. Understand that's a call and tell cooperation. You know, whether you like it or not, it's what it is. Now, and this is again of why um, such persons are trusted when you see them dealing with other nationals. You'll see even other Asiatic nationals come from other parts of Asia and Africa, and when they run into brothers and sisters here in the north, and after they talk to you, they hear your accent, they know you're on, you know, you're continental. And then when you tell them that you're black, all of a sudden the treatment totally changes because you just told them that you're proper. You understand? And by the people being convinced that it's an identity, they don't suspect why they're being rejected or dissed or treated less than. As soon as they agree to the black, then they come under the Christian black codes, then they mad about the treatment they get. When they agree to be chattel. Because one of the rules on Earth planet is to honor your mothers and your fathers. And the common law that trumps the canon law is derived from the nativity of the being. So no matter how many generations have passed, you start claiming to be the name of another man or another people, you've lost your birthright. This is basically what is stated in the Dred Scott case of 1854-1857, where the argument was beautiful. Everything was correct. Arguing territorial um, dispensation relative to slavery not being held in Missouri, and the real deal is, his argument is presented as Dred Scott. He's not Dred Scott, that's, that's the Europeans. And so you cannot transact business in another man's name and then be a lawyer. It doesn't go together. Now logically, not understanding that, and they're promoting the Negro, which means monkey, and black thing, and these people think it's identity, and then they go out into the world seeking rights that belong to humans, are denied, now they're mad and marching all over the place. And then people know that they're incorrect, but won't correct them because we have egos and we can fight very good. You know, and this, this is the truth. And so they're not going to sit and argue with people that got Jesus and nobody else does. So if you got all that, you know, they expect you to make your own sandwiches. You know, which is logical. Um, and of course, then we pass it down to the next generation and the problems continue and get deeper. Meanwhile, not knowing the existence of the global estate trust that was set up by the Popes of Rome after the Unum Sanctum policy for after the conquest of the, of the Moorish nation, um, not knowing that we're the heirs of the estate, we're acting like everything else but who we are, are we clear? And then out of frustration, we join a whole bunch of alphabet super organizations trying to fix the problem when we don't even know the history of the problem, which makes us incompetent, are we clear? So when I asked you those questions in the beginning, 
you know, about security, securitization, you know, the Act of Congress, 1871, stuff like that. And if you're not familiar, and then we're all adults, logically, logically the children don't have a chance. Because you, they can't know what you don't know. You know, and so such persons are also listed in law as minors. In the plural, they're called minorities. And even told that that's an identity. And they even use that as an identity, which also puts them under Christian black codes. Now they may again, and marching all over the place. To no effect, not understanding that they're incompetent. And logically, once in a while, sometimes, uh, Asiatics from Asia or South Asia, which we now call Africa, will try indirectly to talk to us and then we start getting emotional or self-righteous and the conversation stops and then they just back off and let us stew in our nigger juice. You know, because it's like talking to a brick. You know, so after a while when you see somebody got an ego, when you see somebody, and this is the difficulty that some people have that come, come here to the North Gate, um, Sometimes if they try to drop little significations at us to wake us up a little bit and we start getting all self-righteous like Jesus made us and whether they made us a lot or not and they haven't prayed and all stuff, we get Reverend Jones right out of us and as soon as we start that kind of stuff, they already know, stop while they're ahead, you know. And so, because most of them are pretty much told that if they deal with us, you know, stop at the hardware store, get a thick piece of plexiglass, Get the building that's been empty since these people have been going to school. They're not burdened by the nigger tax that our people don't even know exists. And then they do business about three years and get wealthy, sell it to another national, and that cycle continues. And our people ain't put on yet. Because they're saved and nobody else is. They got the Lord and nobody else. So people don't exactly feel sorry for us because we're arrogant. There's one thing you have black, black information, which is a, is a level of ignorance. But ignorance or not knowing is ignorance. But not knowing and then being arrogant, that's really ignorant. And we don't understand why a lot of people reject so-called black people. And it has much to do with the arrogance that we carry with our lack of information, which is ignorance. And so therefore, people don't exactly feel sorry for us taking advantage. This is why you can see a lot of people come from around the world, set up business in, in these so-called black communities, get wealthy, and our people ain't figured out yet how that keeps happening. But it gives them a reason to march around again and complain. And then their leaders are trained in oratory skills, you know, to, to complain beautifully. You, you know what I mean? And call people racist artfully, you know, don't fix nothing. Plus, they cost a lot of finance. They usually wear expensive suits and they got planes and stuff and two houses. You know, a yearly trip to the Bahamas with Jesus is had. You know, all this kind of stuff. And this goes on on a regular basis. Let me say this to you. Mortgages, mortgage means dead pledge. How many people know that? Raise your hand. I want you to look around the room. Mortgage means dead pledge. Look around the room, look, average in your mind the percentage. The percentage, average in your mind. And then consider how many people and their families have mortgages, whether themselves or by, by their parents, and don't even know what the word means. It means dead pledge. The contract is dead, and you're the pledge. And the estate is converted to the Jesuit order through the United States franchise, states of corporate entities and agencies and banks and law firms. And they sign these instruments every day and then that what is called, they're called drafts. They're called due bills, write this down, due bills, D-U-E, bills. And they're also referred to as demand drafts. So whenever they make the instrument, which is the mor mortgage or the dead pledge, how many people did it ever dawn on them that this instrument here is also one of these? And that this instrument is also one of these? 
and that this instrument is also one of these, and so is the driver's license. Now logically, not necessarily logically, but inadvertently, um, some of you are marching praying, keep hope alive, you guys are not going to tell you that because they got a 501c3 skull and bones agreement kickback payment. They keep them maintaining this misinformation that runs the so-called black community. Are we clear? So I guarantee you that usually they have two or three cars, two or three women, two or three houses, fat bank account, fly all over that one place and artfully complain about the conditions of our people with no solutions whatsoever. Are we clear? And it goes on year after year after year after year. And our people give them all kinds of rewards and banquets and dinners and stuff and do the salami baloney thing when they show up not knowing they're poor to a problems. That's not personal, it's just a fact. And if you're going to liberate these people, don't sit around trying to protect protect the images of leader guys and leader girls. Just tell the truth and let the chips fall where they may. You understand? Because them babies are at stake. And the same baby, right there, in short order, will be sitting here or somewhere else, just like you, with another baby in his arm, and they will be worse off because they have less reference points. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Meanwhile, the people around them who have been living quite wealthy, knew this information all the time, and took oaths of death to Rome not to reveal the secrets. And they did nice little cushy jobs, some political token job, until they're no longer useful. You know, but that's how things pretty much run here. And what they do, they usually, like people who are compromised, they'll give them a comfortable job. The higher you go up, like say, if someone's in, in um, say, your higher, it's not really that high, but in what you call council areas of the, of the larger cities, and in what you would call the congressional halls, they'll be, give them ambassadorships and stuff like that to keep them busy, or you know, keep them compromised, and then put them in compromising positions, keep them in check. And that's how much it pretty uh, runs. But do not ever think that as we're having these conversations that people in other organizations, churches, mosques, synagogues, etc., civic organizations, and we're talking about all of NACP, P on me, we P together, and all the rest of the crew, all of them know this information, but they will stay away from this information. I'll be clear. And I'm not saying that to condemn them, I'm saying that to inform you why they always get funded but fix absolutely nothing. And then the Europeans come in our communities, gentrify, take the people's houses, take their bank accounts, kick doors down, take their children when they feel like it, kill their young women and men on the street, steal their organs, no one goes to jail. Then they march and play all around the place again and call themselves U.S. citizens, not knowing what it means stock, because they can't read. You know, and then if you try to give them this information, they think you're attacking their beliefs. It's all training. Are we clear? Clear, clear. Now, securitization under the Unum Sanctum uh, uh, um, Bulla, set up by the Pope of Rome, they declared the Moors dead at sea until proven otherwise, all clear. And that you have abandoned your estate and by virtue of occupation, they're administrating over your estate. Are we clear? And this is the basis upon which the Popes of Rome set up what is called the hegemony, which is later called by people who know less uh, white supremacy. It's not an attitude. It's a church policy. And then the greater power part is to pay off some of the leaders amongst the defeated the people to run the churches for them, to have the people fund their own slavery. When they're really worshiping Constantine, claiming to be worshiping Jesus, are we clear? 
This is why when before we raised the board, I told you to write that down or take pictures of it or put it so that you can understand the politics, because it's all connected. Every lesson that we give you is connected to something we told you before. The issue is that we want you to become effective while we're clear. Pardon me. Now, what is done, let me explain to you what is done and so that you can understand what securities are. It is where they, in the name of sovereign authority, representing persons who are called U.S. citizens or Negroes, Negroes, blacks, colors, because you understand they're all 14th Amendment stock. That, that, they're not identities. Are we clear? They're tags or nom de guerre. They're war names. They're used for trade purposes. That's why they're called men of straw. Are we clear? 14th Amendment persons, which is a corpse, the dead. Are we clear? And they take you and any of what they would call issue, particularly from the female, which means the popes of Rome have claimed the eggs in the womb with the help of the lower priest who marries them under the corporate state and delivers them to Zeus, Roman God, under the guise of Jesus who are really worshiping Constantine. Are we clear? That's an agreement. So they have sold themselves, and this is the position they've taken that you sold yourself. This is why you hear them always say when people challenge, they'll say your mother sold you. And then they'll talk about the birth certificate, not the marriage certificate, birth certificate. And that's only because people of late have been starting to study and found out what uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt did and so, so much focus is put on the birth certificate when it's actually the marriage certificate, birth certificate, all mortgages, driver's licenses, all of them are dead pledges against your body, your rights, your liberties, your inheritances, and your estate. Be clear on that. Are, are we clear? Yeah. This is the premise upon which and how and why Europeans act arrogantly superior to our people. It's not that they feel necessarily that they're better than you, which is the promoted idea. It's because from the orders of the Popes of Rome, they own you. And even though you may present a good argument or attitude like you've got this going on, in the background, they know whatever you say or do don't matter anyway because they own you. Not by divine law, but by political operations, are we clear? And then when they want, you get, you uh, make them really angry, then they create problems for you. You wonder why you have problems. Or why the IRS goes in and seizes your accounts, or DIFUS or some other order comes and takes people's children in the middle of the night for no court order. They don't need any, they, these are problems. Now, we're not talking from the moral or ethical point of view, we're talking about real political operations. You're giving this information so that if you care to be more responsible to yourself and in honor, that you will have the right state of mind to begin to cure some of this. Are we clear? Are we clear? Clear. It is important for the dark priesthood to operate against you with your consent, even if they deceive you. Are we clear? So, it's called the dual legend. All activities that take place with them are put in what you call double ledgers. And the double ledger would essentially be what you would call creditor, debtor, grantor, grantee, um, lender, borrower, things like that. Are we clear? Now, anytime they, they create a mortgage, and they know that when these people go down to um, the corporate cities or town ships that they don't know that they're dealing with admiralty law. Are, are, are we clear? They're thinking that they're dealing with constitution principles and stuff like that. They're dealing under admiralty laws of the sea, under the authority of the Holy See and the Pope of Rome. Are we clear? Then they think they're doing something with Jesus, God, Allah, Moses, and Muhammad, and they get marriage certificates 
thinking that that's some kind of divine ritual between them and the Lords in heaven, when it's really the Lords of London. And it's a bank bomb. It's a mortgage. It's a dead pledge. And through it, the Popes of Rome claim not only the female as a cow, they, just, they say it in French, chow, which is really French for cow. They claim the eggs in the womb even before they hatch. For the, hatch, the eggs that hatch later, that's what the birth certificate is for. But they're all dead pledges. They're all mortgages. Are we clear? So, the person or the people grow up thinking that they have some kind of special divine relationship with Jesus and stuff, with their relationships, and actually their ships in the night that cross and the corporate state is the higher, what you would call, party in the triad. And the triad is the corporate state, the man and the woman, who are subordinate to the contract of marriage that they made with the state, and it's actually a registry. Are we clear? It's a registry, and it's a bank bond. Are we clear? Clear. All issue belongs to the state. They are called wards of the state. That's a nice way of not saying slave of the state. Are we clear? Clear. And so these people, because they said prayers to Jesus, God, and Allah, in the, and they think that they're outside of the auspices of Roman powers. See, so if people are in that state of mind, they feel pretty secure, and they never, they can, most of them can live most of their life and never know that they're serfs. Except when a family member dies and the state comes take the estate or the property, or taxes the children out of it. That's when they start discovering that they're property. It still ain't going on them that they're property, though. Most of them are clear. Or like, as an example, and this is in, isn't this interesting? As an example, like say for instance, someone might buy um, or or transfer some uh, private commercial paper on the fiat currency, or say a BMW that costs 55, 60, 70 thousand notes in the name of dollars, right? And pay for it in say four years or something like that, right? And at the same time, they can buy a house for $50,000 and be in debt for 35 years and still don't be paid off and they figured out what's happening. Because it's a dead pledge. It's a mort gauge. Mort is Latin for dead. The gauge is contract or pledge, you see. And so they just made a dead engagement and then the operative for the Pope will create what is called a mortgage and a promissory note. Write this down, this is very important to understand. With the mortgages are promissory notes. The promissory note is what is used to transfer the alleged debt on you who are really the creditor because it's actually your estate that they're moving everything on because you're under occupation. This is why it's important for them to promote such information that causes you to forget that their foreign Europeans settled in other people's lands. Then to convince you to start calling them white people, which means sovereign, or Americans when they're actually Europeans. At that time, you just converted your estate to them. You just justified their claim. Are we clear? This is why they have paid off so-called black leaders run around talking about black people, white people, as if their identities, and then call them the European American, and look what America did to the black man, those type of things. And it sounds like they're working for their own people. They just sold you out because they knew that you can't read. But Masons, Eastern stars, people of any secret society, know that that, that person just cast a spell. Person who can't read, never, it never dawns on you then that that person just cast a spell and justified your negative position. Do you understand? Well, they're black guys, you know. They, they're so dry. That's why a lot of times when the Europeans get frustrated with us marching and praying all over the place, taking up space and disturbing peace, they'll get frustrated once in a while and say, Why don't you leave the hell alone? Go back to your black leaders to keep selling you back in slavery. Oh, they're racist. The cycle starts again. 
Because they're telling you that's the truth. But we're usually involved with trying to protect the images of our leader guys and leader girls, thinking that, you know, they're being spiritual because they say Jesus and Allah and God and stuff like that. As soon as they call you black, they just put you under the black hoods. When they know, and this is not absent in any format, they know that these people called Negro, black, and colored are Moors. Know it. Divinely, scholarly, factually. And political. Are we clear? Yeah. And this is, a, again, why even, um, you know, Rahm Emanuel, the, um, the, uh, he's called the Jew that left Obama's administration. One of the things that he did as soon as he took office in Macau of the West, which you call Chicago, he issued a proclamation the first full day of the winter solstice and literally told who these people are. Bluntly, bluntly, sealed it from his desk. And so-called black leader guys sitting around calling these people black. Are we clear? And this was a year before Obama went to Egypt and exposed that the American Constitution comes from Muslim law. Michelle goes to the Alhambra because that is when they set up the um, old global estate trust after the fall of the Caliphate in Al Andalusia, which is later called Spain. That's 1492. That's why that's used as an axis here. So keep in mind the whole political platform on Earth since 1492 is to create securities to administer all properties, resources, and hereditaments to the estate of the Pope of Rome via the th three-step operations, Washington, D.C., Westminster, District of London, the Vatican. That's world politics on Earth plane. Are we clear? This is what occurs. Every time you apply for anything in the corporate state, it's securitized. Anything that you put a signatory to is securitized. It's a negotiable instrument. Are we clear? That negotiable instrument being turned back to any agency under states of orders, which are actually private corporations pretending to be the republic operations sanctioned by the Moors when they're actually de facto platforms, as an example. Um, this territory that's called the State of Delaware, right, is the demo platform distinguished from Delaware State Republic that comes under constitution and international law operations securing the rights of the people of the land and people who are parties to it in a political platform. That is a lodial in character distinguished from feudal operations, which is absolutely the platform for the state of Delaware, are we clear? But they know that most people don't know the politics and they don't know how things operate and their leader guys and leader guys, girls, ain't telling them because they need a few pieces of slugs that they call a few pieces of silver and they sell them out for a few pieces of silver, which is referred to loosely, even though that story is improperly told, which is called the Judas Factor. All right? So what they do when you sign for a marriage certificate, it, they're securitized. They create a promissory note, same thing, because they're all mortgages. Now, the promissory note, like say, if someone signs an instrument called the Dead Pledge, uh, it, it becomes a security because it's really a bank bond. They will take it and they'll put it on what is called the asset side of the ledger and then place your position on the debtor side of the ledger. But understand, in fact, this is fact, when you present that instrument, it becomes what you call also an IOU or what is called a demand draft. And so what they do, they do the bookkeeping and they switch sides. 
when actually they've been credited with energy from your estate. But they'll list you as a debtor and then convert the instrument into a bond, create derivatives, put it on the stock market, and then get funds sold as U.S. Treasury bonds around the world to other nation states, and draw off of that, and then turn around and buy substance in the name of administering over your estate, i.e. as government representatives, which they are not. Are, are we clear? You gotta remember, uh, for those of you who understand those dynamics, understand the, um, the cause and reason for what is known as the Clearfield Doctrine of 1942, and why the representatives for the Clearfield Trust Company in, in, in Clearfield, Pennsylvania, were successful with that case, based on what I'm just telling you right now. Are we clear? But it's important for you to have the concept so that when you are injured economically or politically, relative to any instrument that they may have in their possession with your signature on it, that you have a, a fallback. Now, the real deal of it is, um, what occurs is whenever um, any instrument relative to any of the operations against the estate is executed, they will convert it to or do it in the name of the dead. And the name of the dead is the all capital letters that, that you will see them uh, placed on like so-called bills that, you, that they present to you as a bill. They're actually statements of account against the global estate trust set up by the Popes of Rome under the auspices and operations of the United States military complex operations where the debt is already paid because they came here to steal our gold and silver and then they put in its place private fiat currency or private fiat commercial paper belonging to the Jesuits underneath the banking system, which is really the bench of the Pope, enforced by their military operations from Washington, D.C., District of Columbia, all clear. It's how it operates. So when you're dealing with them or what is really supposed to be taking place, you're supposed to be recouping it's called recoupment. So write that down, recoupment. Oh, what you gave them, and why do you desire and want recoupment? This has much to do with, the, for those of you who already have um, information that we've given you before, this has much to do with the nature of the reversionary position that you take in the reversion art, article that we've given you. Reversion. How many of you have got the reversion? We've given it to you on the um, on your flash drive. That's what that position actually is. Now, also understand that in real in the real light of political operations, when you nationalize, that's what you're saying to the world. You're claiming your estate, and your estate is not just the land and the resources; it's also your body. And so that creates problems for Rome's instruments. Understand, the whole platform is, is a war machine, and so in a direct battle, you will never win against them. What you, what you have to do is fight them on what is called the ethereal side. Loosely, that would be called the spiritual side. All right, so when you demonstrate publicly that you're rejecting their claim of authority over your sovereign right of body, what occurs, it, it, it contaminates the operations of the transfer of these derivatives around the world under U.S. Treasury bonds. And they start what you call dying, you know, curling up, becoming useless, because they're dead paper and first because they're dead pledges. See, but long as the heirs demonstrate that they're incompetent or they don't comprehend what's up and that they're wards of the state, it's like you've given them your sovereign right to administer over you. And then by continuously demonstrating that, you, that you're not aware or incompetent of understanding what's going on, they declare you incompetent and a state ward and then arbitrarily take control of your estate under hypothecation operations. 
and then then they have the um, the um, Sister Q V Trust that they sell, which is the Negro, Black, and Colored brands and all capital letters. And you never rebut it and never claim reversion of your estate. And so they say that you've abandoned your estates. This is why if you look into public records, almost all your mortgages or foreclosures are declared abandonments. Not lack of payment, abandonments. They may approach you on the basis of lack of payment. When the real deal, it's never paid because it was already paid when you started because it's actually your estate. So what they do, they do what is called a discharge or a set off in your name, which is why they always want you to get mortgages whenever you are transferring in any what you call estates. They almost insist that you get mortgages, even if you've got what, what you're calling cash. Because they want that instrument because they, they create multiple bonds on it. Are we clear? Now, so securitization is the act of what is called putting these instruments together as securities and then making them fungible. Write that down, fungible. F-U-N-G-I-A-B-L-E, fungible. That means make monetizing them, are we clear? Understand law. Taking these instruments and making them fungible is unlawful and illegal according to law and federal accepted accounting <coughs> principles. Are we clear? That it is unlawful and illegal for all corporate corporations and corporate entities. So, even when they do that, and then put you on the wrong side of the ledger books that they keep in the name of the estate, which is why they do the all capital letters so that you cannot immediately accuse them of human trafficking. So they put it in all capital letters and then you don't contest it, which means that you're agreeing that that's you, then they convert the debt on you. That's called conversion. Are we clear? And this is how they pretty much operate. So that's the trick in a nutshell. And of course, in a, a, a study platform, as you all have studied, you can go into more detail, but I've given you a synopsis of the trick behind securities and securitization. And so any of these instruments, when they're put into the system, promissory note is put with them. But keep also this in mind, and this is what we've always reminded people whenever there's an issue, an argument, with any of these persons that are representatives of any of these agencies, is that the promissory note must never be separated from the mortgage from the beginning until the termination of the alleged, I didn't say the loan, alleged loan or agreement between the alleged creditor and debtor. If at any time the promissory note is separated, the claim of the alleged creditor which is the corporate state or subdivisional agencies who have claimed to represent the estate relationship between yourself and them is void. Are we clear? If they can get you to start arguing quote unquote money and payment, you already don't understand what's going on, which is why most people lose arguments when it comes to the IRS and also mortgage foreclosure issues. They start talking about money and payment and it has nothing to do with either one, but yet they'll initiate that conversation, get you on it, then you're declared incompetent because it's set off. We write this down. Discharged or set off. That's the only thing that takes place. And the only thing that ever took place. So this is why they got start getting you talking about I paid this and I paid that. Get you start saying it. And at that time, at that point, you lied. I'm clear. And again, what you want is a reversion of your estate and what's called recoupment 
of what you gave them because once they accepted the promissory note and put it on, see, because the bank operations and the barrister's operations, when they receive these instruments from you, whether they're birth certificates, marriage certificates, uh, mortgage instruments, etc., promissory notes, which they use against you when they're making claims, understand? Um, they put it on their asset side, so therefore that same IOU becomes a what you call an asset. So therefore that makes you the grantor. Are we clear? Because then they create bonds from it. And from that signature, because you're the heir of the estate, not knowing that you're dealing with the estate. See, you're thinking you're getting something. You're all clear. And because the asset is placed on their side or the bank side as assets. Therefore, you are the grantor, and you have. A, and then they start using it on the stock market. Are we clear? So all things received on it, they're supposed to be sending it to you, but you don't get that. You get bills, don't you? Are, are, are we clear? Then to protect themselves from the fraud, they'll immediately, within 72 hours, usually sell it to another holder, trustee, and then you, you get a note in the, in, in the, in, in the mail talking about it's a, a new mortgage holder. Sometimes you might get that two, three, four, five, six times. And you ain't figured out what's happening, that's what's happening, securitization. Are we clear? All of it is unlawful and illegal and you're declared a tenant and a share proper, and you're thinking that you're paying the building off or that you own it, and you don't. Are we clear? And then when they get ready for it, they come in under, under claim of eminent domain and take the, take the house, whether you so-called made payments or not. Are we clear? So, when you ask, but give, give her the mic, please. Um, I just want, before we get too far, I want to um, ask a couple questions that popped yeah. up in regard. Um, one was, how then do does one purchase or buy a home? They say? See, you don't really purchase or buy. Now, let, let's back up. Okay, okay I'm just giving yes, you a yeah, question. Yeah, one of the question. Then, in, in light of what you said, how does one acquire a home? They said buy. And the other person said, does this also um, go for um, the purchase of automobiles? So. Yes, this is why you got this bubble coming up. All right, let's let's go let's go back to this again. How do we start off? And what you already know, I said if we had another board, I could add to this. Car, what is called auto registration, is a registration of the property to the corporate state, not to you. This is the reason why. The members of the gangs of New York who call themselves policemen can come and tell you to buckle up in their car or put you out on the street and take it. Or if you haven't made a contract with their buddy who gives the politician kickbacks called the insurance company, they'll also take their car from underneath of you and leave you on the damn highway. And if you resist, they'll lock you up. Some people, they kill them. The assumption that you bought the car under the United States Corporation Company that you thought was a country protecting your rights is where the deception comes in. In other words, the whole platform is a fraud and the idea is to convince the people that they own things, that they're buying things. This is why we're saying what they're discharged or set off. As an example, how many people know what Franklin Delano Roosevelt did in 1933 when they confiscated the people's gold? Real quick, answer. No, give him the mic, and then I want you to have the mic back again. After you ask the question, then give it back to her. He dissolved the United States government. Say it again. He dissolved the United States government. All right, the United States, the legitimate United States government was overthrown and dissolved in 1861. After Lincoln bankrupted the United States Service Corporation in France, this has much to do with the Civil War era. And since that Civil War, 
the bank bonds to back that debt was put on the defeated Moors who were branded Negro, Black, and colored since the Civil War as the source of your economic problems. This is why we told you these things before, so you can put these things in perspective. Your concepts are all wrong. So what we try to do is get people to remember what we told them the last time, to tie this stuff together. See, this is the whole deal. There's, do not confuse the assumption of ownership under ethical and moral principle when politically it has no standing. Are we clear? Let's explain it. Let's explain it. They set up a false, fraudulent, impersonating political platform called the Act of Congress 1871, February the 2nd. That political platform was to solidify the foundation of fraud and the conversion of the estates of the Moors who are under occupation in North America, are we clear? Canada and the United States Corporation Company have the same international number. They both are partner jurisdiction under the British Crown. The United States Service Corporation is a British Crown Colony Corporation. For the ignorant who don't know the real history, they have been trained from childhood to think it is a country. Are we clear? So they're starting off on a false concept foundation of operation when they're actually in a surf position. But they must deceive them into stating things that are not true in order to justify what they're doing, like such as agree to be Indians, agree to be black, agree to be Latino, agree to be Negro, agree to be colored, and use it as identity. At that point, you're off the political platform that protects you in treaties and covenants. Are we clear? Because the covenant that set up the political operation that North America is called the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States and the Moroccan Empire. Are we clear? The protected living persons under those operations are the Moabite Moors and their descendants, and the descendants of the deists, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, or Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Barclay as agent in business, and European persons who are deists who agree to the Republic operations at the North Gate and in honor and preservation of the Constitution and the treaties. All others have no rights under those instruments, are we clear? Once they, you, they got you to agree to be Negro, Black, and colored, you stepped off the political platform and are thereby and thereafter subject to the Black Codes, which is what you've been suffering from, which is the purpose of the brand system in the first instance to disinherit you. However, to keep peace, they must have the people believe that they have rights and authorities that they do not possess, are we clear? So to make them think that they were citizens of the political order, they set up what is called the 14th Amendment corporate person after they closed the Freedmen's Bureau and get these people to agree to be Negroes, Negro citizens and black people under the 14th Amendment. Corporate property, are we clear? Such persons are stateless, have no right of a state whatsoever because your estates and inheritance come from your mothers and your fathers. That's why it's called inheritances. So is there any record in the human family that has a pedigree traceable to Negroes, blacks, people of color, which means artificial person? No such people exist. Can you go into the world's nations around the planet to the major cities and see the Negro flag? <laughs> or the colored nation flag, the people of color flag, the Latino flag, the black flag. People even make up flags and try to make it represent this non-represented people. 
and they have no protection whatsoever, then they want to march and pray all over the place, not knowing they're out of order. Are we clear? Are we clear? Now, and these are fundamental truths. These are fundamental truths. They will not talk in this area because the economics of the operations depends on the ignorance of these people who are heirs to the world's largest estate. So they make them feel proud to be brands. I'm so black and proud and stuff. And we people of color, of the deepness of colorness, of the Africanness of hotel, of the universe. The rest of the world looking at these people like they're out the damn lunch. And they think it means spirituality. It means artificial. Distinguish from that which is real. A prima facie disguise of deception. And even a lot of people tell you that. But they don't read, do they? You understand? Now back to the point. So there's an assumption with people that when they get a mortgage, which is a dead pledge, that they're actually buying a home, not knowing that constitutionally, so we talk for the supreme law of the land, that no state can make any instrument or issue instruments or credits or bills of credit as unlawful or coin anything but gold or silver coin for money. And they created private commercial paper, stole our gold, and trained the people from childhood that the private commercial papers of the Jesuits is money. And then get you to call it money. Now you're part of the fraud. Now you've taken the, the, the karmic debt off of them because you call their private commercial paper money. And because it's private, they can tax you on it. Because it's not yours. It's used to discharge against the estate that they didn't tell you about. Are we clear? Yeah. And then they gave you deeds. Now, check, 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 check this out. This is why on the flash drive we gave people, even the congressional records, even where Tropicon is talking about, which they could find themselves if they just do research. In 1913, Woodrow Wilson, to counter Noble Drali, sold their, their operative bank well, government platform to the Jesuit order off Jekyll Island, Georgia. And they converted all of our, our allodial titles and aboriginal titles, which most people aren't even familiar with, into mortgages and deeds since 1913. We're not talking about 1800. We're not talking about 17, we're not talking about 1500, we ain't talking about the good ship Jesus. We're talking about 1913. All the allodial titles that represent your ownership and represent your right of stewardship over your estates and property were converted into mortgages and deeds 1913. Are we clear? Clear. Those are not instruments of ownership. They're instruments of serfdom, they're share cropping instruments. So these people are thinking they're buying houses and they're actually making share cropping agreements. So what do they do? They measure your work life and they'll call you as a corporation, a corpse, what is your income? Then you start saying what your income is when the truth of the matter is your wages are not income. Income only applies to foreign corporate operations in a foreign jurisdiction. And it, it, is, the pro, it is the profit after, after capital investment in a corporate capacity. It has nothing to do with natural men and women's labor or wages. They are not the same thing. So they trick you into agreeing that you have income and you just say that you're a corporation. So now, they listen to you as corporate property because all corporate entities come under the Roman Curia. Are we clear? So people going about their lives thinking that they're making payments, thinking that they're owning property, and it's a dead pledge, and they're even listed on the instrument as a tenant. Look at any deed, they're listed as a tenant. Does the tenant sound like owner? 
you know, and so there's an assumption. So the point that I'm making is, Dr. Mayula, there's an assumption of ownership and not the fact. Are we clear? An assumption and not the fact. Why do we do what we do here? Is we're clearing these issues up so that we can start becoming competent, changing our language, changing how we sign things and understand that anything that you sign is a negotiable instrument. Know it. And as soon as you give it to them, they will securitize it. And then put you on a debtor ledger. This is what they do. This is what they do. All corporate state agencies, clerks, do this every day, and that's their operation. This is why when you see people get a little bit weight, whether Asiatics or Europeans matters not, and they go down to those clerks, and then they try to either claim the birth certificates, or claim the estate, or do a reversion. That's why you see all of those people behind their clerk's offices start getting hostile because they're living off of you. You aren't supposed to know this, because they know if you come like that, you're either past 30 degrees, 33 degrees in masonry, or you still star, and you're not supposed to be talking openly anyway, and that you can really try to free these other dummies that's walking there thinking they're making payments and they're discharging. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. See, so these people, like as we opened up, the people are under the assumption that they understand the things that they're operating with and in, and they do not. We're not informing you, just informing you. We're telling what occurs in your life every day. We're making you aware of it. We're not telling you something that does not apply to you. We're making you aware of something and things and operations that occur every day in every community all across this country, but that the masses are unaware of it or ignorant to it. Are we clear? Clear. Are we clear? Clear. So understand this information is not given to you just as an, inform an information principle. This is what is in operation. But the reason we're telling you is because when you begin to change your language, it kills the bonds. That's how you slay the dragon. You slay the dragon because you will stop feeding the dragon. This is where it's talked about in the Septuaginta or the Bible where they, sell, where they say you, that these people will not be able to buy or sell less with the mark or the number of the beast. And then they will say, and the Bible says, the mystery of the son of perdition will be revealed for it is the number of a man and these people keep looking for some mystery devil in the sky or in, in the ground. Don't dig too deep because you might run into something ugly and he comes up with a red tail and stuff. No, it's people looking at you right in your face. You understand? They bleed and they sleep just like you. The best way they can get away with is get you looking for the mystery devils and the mystery gods. And, and the real deal is they are both devils and gods before your face, pulling you into the pits of hell of ignorance while operating on your estate and the comfort zone is you believing that you know what's going on when you really damn don't. So what occurs is people think that a car registration is just so they can keep track of their car. It's a bank bond and it's on the stock market and it's bundled, those bundles are called instruments. That's where the securitization comes in. As an example, car registration, car registration, car registration, birth certificate, marriage certificate, um, social security number, driver's license, driver's license, CDL, whatever license you got, a beauty salon license. They're bundled together. And that's called securitization. Then they're bundled, derivative, and they are presented as fungible instruments. Fungible, that means it's monetized and is used as trade for resources. Are we clear? This is done amongst government level, not amongst the common people's level. They're given private commercial paper instruments of the Jesuit order of the Federal Reserve, which is private commercial paper, and lied to and told them that there's dollars. The dollar is by grams and measures. 
weights and measures, gold yakumthal, which is a gold coin, or the equivalent of silver, which is all civilization on Earth planet is based on cosmogony, cosmology. And so this is the reason why people who know this will always carry a coin, silver or gold coin. Likewise, copper, right? That's the alchemical metal of Venus, which is our star. That's your copper. The alchemical metal of the moon, which is your crescent. That's our moon. And then, of course, the gold coin, which is the sun. And when you see in the Bible, Septuaginta, when the divine order says, I leave these signs for you, the sun, the moon, and the stars. And this is the keys to civilization on earth. So that's the moon me, the money. And so the 360 degrees is broken into four quarters. Those four quarters are represented by four crescents or four quarter moons. And it's, that's why they're silver. And you put the four quarters and it makes a hole 360 degrees but the 360 degrees is also what? 100% is where you get your centiles. And then with our crescent or the dog star, etc., it is copper. That's why our buildings are capped with copper. You understand until the Europeans start stealing it. So they came to steal our gold and the silver. And then they gave you fiat. And they've been training you from childhood that they're giving you the money. This is the money. This is why in all secret societies or made men will carry a coin. Sometimes they'll press a coin from different orders and it'll be of some precious metal, usually gold or silver. And sometimes in your lesser degrees they may give bronze or brass or something like that, but they will carry a coin. And when they're dealing with other people to talk to them, to let them know they're a made man or made woman, they might pull out a coin and just spin it or do something like that and the person recognizes that they're not amongst the dead. Do you understand? Or they may give some sign or symbol to know, let them people know they're not amongst the dead. And that's how you talk amongst the dead while talking to someone else who's alive. And so therefore they're free and accepted in society. Now, understand this. And so it's important for them to promote that that's a negative position so people don't ever look at it. When it's really all about them. Are we clear? Now, when I told you all to look at this, um, I want to show you something. Now, in masonry, they'll say, Jubala, 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 the three ruffians, right? Um, now, under the present inquisition, European occupation of North America, there are no great differences in the, in the political complexions of the three zones into which Morocco has been divided among the European occupiers. And thus differences in the positions in respect to each. Now the body politic members of the United States Corporation Company being one amongst the three European occupiers of Morocco exercises certain coextensive rights throughout Morocco, al -Murat. The French and the Spanish are the other two European occupying powers at Morocco. The United States Corporation owners are de facto and fraudulently exercising powers vested only in the secretly overthrown republic and its constitution. The administrators of the United States Corporation are also exercising capitulatory rights, which are extraterritoriality in Morocco, the present basis for which the Treaty of Peace and Friendship concluded by the organic United States and the Sultan of Morocco on day 16 of 1836. That was the only time it was ever modified, you see? And the Act of Algeciras of April 7, April 7, 1906, to which the United States body, body politic is a signatory. And this is why in the treaty book, when we talk about, when we talk about um, the charge the affairs, when the charge the affairs and the, um, the uh, Secretary of State mentions again how the Moors lost their nationality. Let me read that just, so, you, so you, you can see uh, why it's important um, 
for people to be given reference points. So, because once you get reference points, you can start being a detective yourself. You can understand the politics. You can understand the necessity, the political necessity of secret societies. You have to have a hierarchy to maintain this corruption. You can't protect the corruption without a hierarchy. The U.S. democracy order was set up for the specific purpose to protect the corruption. So it's important for the people to think that it is the legitimate republic's platform. The republic was overthrown in 1861. That's what the Civil War was all about. The Act of Congress 1871, February 2nd, was the perfecting of the political platform by which the overthrow operatives could operate and appear legitimate. That's the U.S. democracy that you're suffering from right now. So if they can get you start talking about colors and racism, you're not paying attention to what's really happening to you. This is why that paradigm is promoted. Are we clear? This is why, like you see any, um, anyone that's in the power positions of black leadership guys are taken to what is called Muhammad's Mountain. The Masonic term would be said, would be called the mountaintop. The mountaintop is the great seal that you see on the back of the note. Note, which is a debt. It's not a value, it's a debt instrument. Are we clear? And the only president ever to use the great seal was John Hanson, who was the first president for the order, 1781. He was more. No president, European president, ever used that seal thereafter. That's why they're all silent. You'll see it on the note, and the only ones that's claiming or putting a claim on it are members of the Illuminati, claiming your estate because you insist on being black, which means you've abandoned your estate. That's the source of their power. Are we clear? So let's, let's go into, uh, I'm going to read this letter to the, uh, now keep that in mind, 1906, right? Is that 1906? Now, uh, we're going to deal with the charge of affairs. Um, excuse me, this was that. Give me, a, give me a moment. Now, this is uh, on citizenship, and, and for those uh, who are listening, and for other scholars who will see this in the future around the country, this is your research. Go into uh, citizenship of the United States, expatriation, etc. Page 459. And you'll see a correspondence, <coughs> pardon me, of August the 3rd, 1906. And you'll see this correlation. Um, chapter 4, temporary provisions, and it'll say what? Morocco. Which you can see, that's the United States. That's the United States. Right? Expatriation, that's citizenship, right? And what does it tell you? Does that say United States? What this tells you, United States, citizenship, expatriation, right? Yes. All right, it's Morocco. Down the bottom of the page. All right, so when you think that scholars don't know this information, it's only because they're not talking, because they got oaths. You know, you don't talk against the Pope because you become useless. And they, call, they talk about uh, things like along the line of neutralization. So there's no retirement in what's called communities in Florida and other places for overseers and spies. They're usually neutralized. They have fun while they, while they, going, while they rolling, though. Now, listen to this. Morocco, Mr. Phillips charged the affairs to Mr. Root, Secretary of State, August the 3rd, 1906, American Legation, Tangier, August the 3rd, 1906. Sir, there are strictly speaking no Moroccan laws relating to citizenship of Moorish subjects in Morocco. The fundamental laws of this non-Christian country, you see what Obama was talking about when he went to Egypt? and why he went to Article 11 of the Treaty of 1790? All right. Are based entirely upon the Islamic Code, no part of which treats of the subject of citizenship. 
page 460, citizenship of the United States, expatriation, etc. There are, however, numerous treaties and conventions between the various Christian countries and the Moorish Empire by means of which citizenship in this country is defined. But as I understand from the above acknowledged instructions that it is not the desire of the department to call for a report upon what such lines. I will therefore confine these remarks to general conditions existing, which may possibly be of some use in connection with the information desired. Number one, citizenship in Morocco may be said to be governed by the laws pertaining to the same in other countries. That means the universal principles of citizenship. With the exception that all persons, all persons residing in Morocco who cannot prove, who cannot prove foreign citizenship or protection are considered if so jure as Moorish subjects. That means you've got to prove you, that you're not Moorish. You get the point? Whether you have a nationality card or not, you got to prove that you're not Moorish. <clears throat> How come this stuff is not discussed in these communities? Two and three. Moorish subjects lost their nationality only by becoming naturalized, not nationalized, naturalized in or protected by another country having treaty relations with the Moorish Empire. And it was established by the Convention of Madrid, concluded July the 3rd, 1880, etc. as follows. Then you go into your Article 15. But the deal of it is, when you think scholars don't know this information, it's just that they're paid not to talk on these matters. They're paid to start talking colors, you know, light-skinned, orange-skinned, black girlfriend, and you like my new light-skinned, black leather coat, because the black people of ancient Egypt and the black gods of Egypt of commitments and talk that kind of stuff that gets you off of what's really happening to you. And the rest of the world already knows this, this is what's wrong with you. And what is this issue that the Charge the Affairs talks about, that the Moors only lost their nationality by being denaturalized? The They're talking about 14th Amendment, the Naturalization Act. And Ulysses Grant, when he changed the Naturalization Act of 1790 into 1870, this is why when you go into your law book, that the Europeans on the Knights of Columbus Ku Klux Klan oath start calling themselves white people in what? 1870. That's why the specifics of free white persons in the law book will make that distinction. Can you pull out that law book, D, and pull out free white persons? I want to keep this parallel so that people can understand what's happening because they need to understand what the securitization is and the security is. So when they agree to be Negro, black, and colored, they automatically become bonded. They're called bondsmen. In other words, this is what the bondage is. So they tell you it's a change when it's actually bonds that's on the market. It's paper instruments. Are we clear? Go ahead. It's on, while she's checking that, um, there was a question of would you elaborate on the importance of reserving the rights when signing any law documents? And this is back to really understanding that in the brand system, you have no rights. Dred Scott principle, plaintiff of an error, See, if you're not in your proper person, you have no rights to claim because your rights are inherited from the honor of your mothers and your fathers that your days may be longer from the earth land. That's your inheritance. You cannot move on this earth transacting business in another man's name and talk about liberties. They don't go together. Dred Scott, Ferguson versus Plessy, how many generations does it take these people to understand that you cannot claim another man's name and transact business and be at liberty? It doesn't work. See, meaning you can talk about rights and they explain to be Joe Smith and they're dead. If you're Asiatic and you put down Smith Jones and Johnson, your claim is already dead. 
It's called Improving Persona. Diak? Yes, good brother. Give the brother Mike. Get a brother Mike, please. And can you come up here and share with us and let everybody know your attribute and then share with us what you're reading from and read it complete. Henry Campbell Black's Law Dictionary of Ancient and Modern Jurisprudence. Can you come over here, please? You, you can moonwalk if you feel like it. It's fine. It's fine. I know what you think. And I'm a uh, free white, white person. Free white person. Free white persons refer to Naturalization Act as amended by Act uh, July 14, 19, 1870. So you can see 1870. So you're not talking about ancient white people. So this is a legal status, are we clear? And in reference to Europeans who took on this title, you have annotation and an explanation. So continue to read, good brother as meaning uh, naturally given to it when you first use the uh, first state, 103 C3, meaning all persons belonging to the European race then commonly counted as white and their descendants, including such descendants in other countries uh, to which they give immigrated. They have immigrated, continue. Uh, and whenever you see it, because you already know that law books are, are abbreviated for condensation. So whenever you see the word it, say free white person, so it can be clear to these people what they're reading. So it, i.e. free white person, and then continue to read. It includes all European. It, free white persons. Okay. It includes all free white persons. No, it means free white okay, persons. Okay, 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 free okay, white okay. persons means. Oh, yeah, go ahead. It includes all European Jews, more or less. You still didn't get it. It is a short because it's briefed. Say free white persons means. Okay, I got you. Free white persons okay, includes. Right. Right. Free white persons includes all European Jews, more or less intermixed. More or less intermixed. More or less intermixed with people of Celtic. Uh, Celtic. 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 Okay, Celtic. Uh, what's that? Uh, Scandin Scandinavian? Scandinavian. Uh, uh, Teutonic. Uh, Iberian, Iberian, Latin, Iberian. Iberian, Latin, Greek, and Solomon descendant. It includes. Free uh, white persons. Uh, free white persons includes uh, Magyards, Laps, Finns, and the the Albanians. Albanians and Albanians. Yes. Three white persons includes the mixed Latin, uh, Celtic, Albanians, Celtic. Celtic Albanians, and the Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portuguese. And Portugal. And Portugal. The mixed Greek Latin uh, phenomic, yeah, phenomic of North. Africa inhabitants of Sicily and the mixed South or Phoenicians. Tartar. Tartar. Tartar, 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 Tartar inhabitants yeah. of South Russia. It does not mean. Free white persons? Oh. Free white person does not mean Caucasian race. Repeat it. Free white person does not mean Caucasian race. Repeat it. Free white person does not mean Caucasian race. Right. Arab race or Indo-European Indo Indo race, nor the mixed Indo-European, uh, what is that? Dravidian? Dravidian uh, Semitics. Yes. And the Mongolian people who inhabitants of uh, Persia. Yes. A Syrian of Asiatic birth and descendant will be entitled will to, not will be. not be entitled to become a naturalized citizen of the United States as being a free white person. And then it has multiple law cases, doesn't it? For reference. Multiple law cases. So as you can see, it's a legal status, isn't it? Absolutely. And that Europeans and Caucasians are not free white people. 
and some of them were brought into the status of free white persons. However, they must be mixed, must they? It has to be. Yes, and yet, yet you have so-called black scholars call them free white people, and then at that time they called them sovereigns. And then instead of being, claiming that their own bloodline, which is Moorish and North African, they claim to be black and gave up their birthright. Then they want to march and complain all over the place. You see the problem? Do you see the contradiction? Absolutely. And then you have scholars that keep pre preserving and defending that position as if it's really historically correct, knowing that they are frauds and co for operatives, and by our people not having availed to them literature like this, they follow behind that, protect that position, and don't know they're agreeing to the black codes that they're getting screwed by, and that's called consent, isn't it? All right, so if they consent to the black codes, do they have a right to complain about being treated under the black codes? Absolutely not. All right, now I want you to go into the book and I want you to read Impropriate Persona. Now, Impropriate Persona, this is back to the issue of being in your proper person. To have a claim in law, or claim a right of escape, or claim at liberty, you must be indeed yourself or the barristers of England have jurisdiction, what you call leave, are we clear? Now, um, this is no different than someone trying to claim an estate or something like that or benefit and you have generations that have passed and they're transacting business in another man's name. In law, they're not heritable, are we clear? This is the reason why the Europeans put their family names on the defeated Moors so that when they go out into life and start signing things in their European names, they don't know that that makes them non-descendable and non-heritable. So it automatically reverts to the corporate state, and then the Europeans get wealthy, and these people sit around, and we was here first, and they come around, and everybody else is wealthy and stuff, and we've been working our butts off for generations, and we don't have nothing to show for it. What's your name, Joe Smith? Line your ass off and not knowing that that's a non deal. And if you're, if you're not a proper person, the barristers of England already have leave on you. You can't even challenge the jurisdiction. Do you understand these, these principles? And one of the, um, and this is why it's important for people to comprehend and understand, this is why we tell people, law and history goes together. That's not a mere opinion. That is information that our people need to know that people who know they should know these things deliberately do not tell them. So they grow up thinking that these things have no relationship or that when it comes to issues of law, they gotta hire a barrister from England, not knowing that at that point they give them leave. And the reason they give them leave because they're incompetent and don't know that they're incompetent. Are we clear? And at that point, they become just like a cardboard. This is the reason why they will say often in any argument of rights, liberties, or estate, when such persons start talking, they tell them to shut up. Well, I'm going to represent myself. Well, you just said that you're a postcard. Postcards don't talk. You know, a poster don't talk. These only know about my rights. They don't even know what rights are and how they are preserved because they don't know the fundamental rules of civilization. Do you understand? Meanwhile, we are the descendants of the founders of civilization. We are the descendants of those same wars that brought the Europeans out of darkness into light between the 12th and the 16th century, which you have what you call road scholars, made men, and masons, etc. All of that is Moorish science, just put under other names. That's why all the signs and symbols are Eastern, because they belong to you. And they got our people all spooked up, think they're signs of the devils and stuff, and they reject it, don't know it's their own culture. And then these people are ruling you with your own stuff under their names. Uh, are we clear? Clear. Uh, you find appropriate for uh, Several words. I am, one word. Yeah. Propria, two words. Persona. It would be in the beginning of, of the section in I. Appropriate persona. And this is very important because people, and this is back to where people assume that they have rights because they hear these words and phrases and don't know that status is everything because they're not told. So they're, you know, in the, in the nature of self. In, 
Don't they? Don't they have? Uh, um, most of them have Nikes. New Balance. You know Michael Jordan's sneaks that cost anywhere from seventy to two hundred, sometimes three hundred notes. And Gucci belts, even though they may be fake, and pop books, and will not invest fifty five, sixty notes into a book that involves their everyday affairs every day and understand that people who know this information generally are compromised and so they're not talking or if you bring the subject matter up they will do what is called casting you out the window change the subject act like you don't know what you're talking about divert it or something like that it's called casting out the window and this has been the tradition and so again why is it that we do what we do? Why are we here in the House of Reawakening Minds? Why do we have to be in a venue, a venue like this to get this information out? Because most people are already paid not to get on these subject matters. Why? Because it liberates people. It doesn't make you a follower. It doesn't make you a believer. It liberates you. And it gives you reference points so that you can start saving your family and your estate for real. And so logically, people who have been benefiting from your ignorance don't want you to be involved with this information because it kills their bond system. Are we clear? Yeah. Yeah. Now, and, and this is what the securities and securitization is all about. Um, and this is really the subject matter. And yet, unless you knew this information, it would never dawn on you that that's what's happening to you every day economically. And that when you when you went and signed that mortgage for the house thinking that you were buying the house, your signature already transferred it to your estate. And you probably didn't have a trust or estate set up, and you didn't convert it back into a local platform, and more than likely you signed it with the European's name, and they put you on the ledger side of the debtor when actually you're the creditor. You never challenged it. You never convert the mortgage or deed back into an allodial title, and thus they're automatically your trustees. And this is what actually goes on every day. But meanwhile, these same people claim to be black. Oh, they got special personal relationships with Jesus and stuff. They know Prophet Muhammad and stuff. They know Allah and everything, and they pray and make a lot and all that. They know all this stuff and don't even know the basics of operations on Earth planet. How dare they claim a God they do not see and do not understand the politics that they deal with every day? How dare they claim the love of God they do not see and love not their brothers and sisters whom they see every day? In true law and in, in civics, in the common law, such persons are not in their proper self, have no claim of right, and come under the jurisdiction of the corporate operators who are deputy knights for the Pope's of Rome, i.e. the Bar Association. Read in propria persona. Make sure you stay in the mic. In propria persona, in one's own proper person. Repeat that. In one's own proper person. It almost sounds redundant, doesn't it? Doesn't it? In one's own possessive, own possessive. So it's affirmatively <coughs> stating your position. Read again and complete your reading. In proper persona, in one's own proper person. Free white person is a rule. No, it does uh, uh, Or in proper persona. Oh, in proper persona. It is a rule in pleading that pleas to the jurisdiction of the courts must be pleaded in, in proper now, persona. Now, back up. Must. Is that conditional? Is that, is that opinionated? Is that optional? So, in proper persona, read it again, read it slow, and feel free to Speak what you see in it after you read it. Read it again, read it slow, read it solidly, read it soundly. In appropriate persona, it is a rule in pleading that pleas in the jurisdiction of the courts must be pleaded in proper appropriate persona because if 
the courts must be pleaded. If back up. If if pleaded. Oh, if pleaded by the attorney, they admit the jurisdiction. All right. So as soon as you hire an attorney, they have jurisdiction. You just gave up your birthright. And it's a must. If you're not in your proper person, logically that's why you hire them, because you don't understand what's going on. At that time, you converted your estate to them. Now they speak for you as a trustee, and they have leave. And what means leave means they don't have to defend you. They're a bounty man who delivered you to that court, and they can leave you there through whatever circumstances are, and rape you in the process. They just got a tie on. Are we clear? And if you didn't know that, tough cookies. This is why they tell you only a fool represents himself in court. Because a free man or free woman presents herself or he himself in proprio persona. Because the first rule of civilization is man, know thyself. Are we clear? Clear. All right, read it through. As an attorney is an officer of the court, and he is presumed to be to be pleaded after having obtained leave. So, and he's an officer of the court, and you be thinking he'd be representing you, and his obligation is to the court and not to you. And just like when people think they're buying stuff, and isn't there an assumption on people that when they hire an attorney or lawyer, that they are what? Protecting their rights? When actually they gave them leave? And they can't even be in town just after that. And that they're an officer of the court. And after assuming leave, you're actually a piece of cardboard sitting there. And since he's an officer of the court, his interest is in the court, not you. And then these people, under their black codes, keep on complaining why we keep on losing. Do you understand what's happening here? That's a presumption, absolutely. A presumption does not make right, nor does believe. Does it? Not, not at all. All right. So now, in ancient Yucatan, or ancient Hikukta, later called Egypt, when they raise people to conscience, don't they give them three candlelights around ancient altar made of seven rare woods? And that first light is belief. Its reflection is neophyte. Or you begin the journey of learning. Journeyman. That second light is faith. Its reflection is scholar. The third light is fruition. Its reflection is master. Thus, master mason. Do you understand? Mother's son, my son. In the study of the human family, the supreme and sublime knowledge of human evolution on earth planet, the operations of government, the knowledge of the elements, the building blocks, the sciences, the communication systems, etc., and the disciplines that preserve civilization on Earth. That's masonry. Mathematics, geometry, yes. are we clear? Yes. Trigonometry, science of government, are we clear? Yes. Islam is law, order, and governmental principle. And they may hide it under many names, but it does not change, and it doesn't pass away. And it is the foundation of civilization on Gaia, Earth planet. Are we clear? Yeah. So whether they claim to be Jews, Muslims, or Christians, in secret, all of these Europeans here have got Korans. Do you understand that? Clear. But they don't look at them as some spooky prayer instrument. They deal with it from a science perspective, and they've been ruling you with your own stuff. Yeah. It's time that you wake up and understand that they set up a global estate trust since they overthrew you, and they've been securitizing you as a chattel instrument ever since. Are we clear? Yeah. This information is given to you so that you can start liberating yourself. Because when you change your state of mind, you will change the vibration around you, the energy around you, and that's what starves the dragon. You will not beat the dragon in its face from the physical perspective. You will beat him ethereally or spiritually. Are we clear? Yeah. This is what it means when you see David pulling them five smooth stones out of the water. The water represents wisdom. 
the smooth stones represent that this wisdom has been running across this foundation for centuries and centuries and centuries. That's why the rocks are smooth. And he only takes one and puts it above his head 360 degrees, turns it and strikes Goliath in the forehead. That's where the, the thalamus nerve comes from the dark side of the brain, terminates above the nose. Then Goliath falls. He takes Goliath's own sword and cuts his head off with it. But while Goliath rules, he takes the Moabitess in the head of the Sphinx and puts the Moorish sword above her head, which means the subjugation of the Moabite woman. And as long as she's subjugated, we're subjugated. Are we clear? Yeah. Because the real operations on Earth planet is the matriarchy. Are we clear? Yeah. So honor your mothers and your fathers that your days may be longer upon the Earth land because since your fall, Rome has been securitizing instruments on you, bundling them, which are called derivatives, and securitization, and then making them fungible instruments, which is monetization, and selling them to the rest of the world. And when you become conscious and start clearing the honor of your mothers and your fathers, that's what starts killing the dragon's food, because you're not going to beat the beast. You must starve him. Are we clear? Yeah. That's capturing the straw man. Are we clear? Yeah. Yeah. So it's an abstract. So you're giving this information so that you can see what they're doing to you because actually even when you go into your dream states or when you go to sleep at night and you think about these things, what it does is wake up the memory that's in your cells. But you've got memories that's in your cells. And they live individually of each other whether you know it or not. And that's the purging, or that's the baptism. And what occurs is, as you start clearing that out, the electrical system of the universe reattaches the broken wires in your electrical system, because everything operates by energies. And you come closer to the wheel, what they call Ezekiel's wheel, or the imprint set in you by your mother, that was set in her by her 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 mother, which you go to the four gates, and that's why you see in the book of Malachi, with the closing of the Old Testament, that the Son of Righteousness rises with healing in his wings. And thus, you will leave them with no root or branch. It is the honor of the integrity of the honor of your mothers and fathers. That's how you will kill Rome. Outside of that, you will serve Rome because you're already prepared as food. And the securitization is how they've been doing it in the physical plane. Are we clear? And now that yeah. you collectively have started to declare your nationality, which means you're telling the world that you are stopping your practices of being prodigal and have decided to come home. But it must be done in the heart in the mind. And when you start speaking accordingly, you're casting good spell, what they call the gospel, that counters the bad spell that has kept you in the blackness or darkness all of these generations. And it is absolutely that simple. And though it is well that you eat better food, that ain't really where it's at. It is really your state of mind. And so you must be reborn with a new mind. And if that mind is pure, that's how you defeat Rome. And you're not going to defeat Rome any other way, so don't get it in your mind that you're going to defeat Rome any other way. I'm not arguing about your desires. You understand? I understand that we get a little bit, you know, salty here and there about things that occur to us, but you're not going to beat Rome. Rome is a death machine. You understand? They have devoured many prophets before you. So don't think that you're going to go to Rome and grab whole Rome by the collar and start talking trash. Because it ain't going to work. However, you can beat them ethereally. Now, loosely, it will be called spiritually, but that's a misconception. Because spirit is only breath. And this is why Rome fears this information. Because you can take even a little child and slay Goliath. If you can get them to be pure, 
in their thoughts and honorable, even though everyone who is here is damaged. Do you understand? There's no one here that's not damaged. So don't get that through your head. However, if you approach this information with a pure heart, wound has received another nail in their coffin. And this is symbolized, because Rome tells you, talk to you all the time. This is why, like in the Wizard of Oz, when you see the house, the house fall down from the sky onto the wicked witch, and you see her stockings curl up, that's the stocks falling under the house of knowledge. In my father's house, there are many mansions. See, they're talking to you. That's your zodiac. And the stocks are your stockings. Yellow brick road is the zodiac wall. The, the, uh, the lion, the tin man, the straw man, they represent, on one level, three ruffians. And they also represent the trinity operations. The lion of Judah represents the true Yahudi, or the people with hair like lamb's wool, sign of Leo. This is why most liberators in this Aquarian cycle will have Leo somewhere in their chart. But he lost his courage. The straw man is the 14th Amendment. The rusty tin man is the Rome cribbing industry. But it also represents that industry is going to come to a screeching halt, like Raleigh told you. The yellow brick road is your zodiac constitution in the battleground courtyard in Shaka Moxon, which you call Philadelphia. That's why that city hall is designed just like a mosque with a parapet on the north gate. And that's why the cornerstone is in a grave pit, like an open grave. And this is why when you go to that Masonic Lodge, number one Broad Street, you'll see George Washington close the lodge saying, whoa, which means Hiram ain't dead. They thought he was dead, buried in the north, dark north, the north gate because they're the keepers of the North Gate. Well, Hiram ain't dead, and they're not winning. They thought they had the game wrapped up. Well, they don't. So you're the heirs of the lost estate. This information is given to you so that you can change your state of mind. As you change your state of mind, I don't have to tell you everything. It's no need to because you already know it. My job is only to smack you around, stimulate you, you to be honorable, and the memory is already in you because you've been imprinted before you even came here. This is what you need to understand. And your attachment to that knowledge is based on your sincerity. And when you become cognizant and sincere, Rome system begins to crumble before your face. You need not even lift a hand. All you need to do is open your mouth and tell the truth. And if you want to liberate yourself, liberate someone who does not know. That's the best I can tell you, and I can't tell you anything else. And so certain things we will tell you redundantly, redundantly, redundantly. Because when your mind changes, your words will change, your language will change. And the same way the dark priesthood puts spells on you is the same way you're going to cast them off. by the strength of the words of your mouth. And it's not a mystery system, it's just simply the truth. Are we clear? Yeah. Yeah. So you will never capture the straw man. So if anybody's trying to sell you a package, talk about capturing the straw man, you're being played. You will strangle the man of straw by rebutting and rebuking everything that won't as place. And understand, revert all claims wherever your signature is because it's a negotiable instrument and that's the source of the dragon's food. You do decisions, but of course, this is back to the issue of also you loving one another and wanting for your brother what you want for yourself and doing unto others as you would have them do unto you, then nature comes to your aid because she does not recognize person 
She does not recognize station. She deals only with meritocracy. And as you become more sincere on the liberation of the human family and the uplifting of all humanity, nature herself comes to your aid. Not me, not anyone else, but only predicated on yourself. So whoever will, you can hear this if you want to, and you don't have to if you don't want to. There's a consequence, however. And you're not going to go out on this planet and talk about that you were not told, because you were told. And you're now responsible. So I suggest that you study hard, get very clear on this, and go liberate someone else. And the faster you liberate someone else, the faster you will be liberated. However, Rome already knew this was coming, so they're accelerating the securitization. This is why you have Manchurian Masons and you have ancient Manchurian families that are killing, that are killing the T-bonds because they know that most of your leaders have sold you out. And the rest of the civilized world is suffering because we've been messing around with this information so long, which means it's not that this information hasn't been amongst us. It has not been properly used, and it has not been properly disseminated. And then Rome's going to and fro the earth devouring nations while we've been playing around. And by our people not knowing that they're at the center, the center of this estate, they have not taken responsibility, are clear. Meaning that we've been minimized for so many generations that for many of our people don't think they're responsible to this information. However, they are the first heirs to this estate and they are indeed responsible. Are we clear? And you must stop protecting so-called black leaders who keep perpetrating the brand on our people in the name of marching and praying in goodness when they're actually co tell operatives. This is again why we go to the charge the affairs to show you this is no secret information. You know, whether so whether Europeans or politicians or any scholars pretend they don't know the relationship. And as you can see, and it's no secret, the whole foundation of the governmental operations here at North America is based on the treaty between the Moroccan Empire and the United States. So anybody in politics and anybody in scholarship pretend they don't know that these people are Moors are lying. Do you understand? Uh, including, and that's also why, you know, like years ago I started sharing with people from the diplomatic relations, the letters from George Washington to the Sultan of Morocco. Yeah. And let's read that, let's read the first part of that the, uh, in your treaty book. Because this will be, this will be concept-wise, this will be concept-wise, Can you do it with 125s? 25, yeah. Well, uh, and again, you know, because one of the things that you see as people are starting to wake up, you see them send out trolls that even try to misrepresent this information. And you try to say it's optional, you can call yourself if you want to call yourself or that this information from the more science stuff of America and it has nothing to do with, you know, the so-called black community type stuff. And um, this will further show you that these people are calling self cooperatives. Um, and including when you read George, George Washington's letter, you will see even from the first paragraph that he was not the president from his own letter to the Sultan. Um, Dr. Naila, what's the Islam, though. A letter from George Washington to Muhammad Ibn Abdullah, Sultan of Morocco, City of New York, December 1st, 1789. Great. So, so immediately we can see that it's not foreign in jurisdiction either, is it? No. Huh? No. No, neither. We're talking New York, aren't we? Now you understand, for those who have been to New York, you notice that you find the street in New York, Day Street, D-E-Y, and that George Washington took his oath on Day Street and before he took his oath in Philadelphia. So I'm just pointing these things out for those, for scholarship purposes, because they have put trolls out there that keep trying to 
uh, present that black is legitimate because they're being exposed and act like there's no relationship between the Moroccan Empire or the treaty and the United States when this is at the very foundation. All right, so read it um, in, in its entirety. Great and magnanimous friend, since the date of the letter which the late Congress by their president addressed to your Imperial Majesty. Immediately that indicates that he wasn't the first president, doesn't it? Yes. Sir. And yet it has been taught to the people that he's the first president. This is his own, own letter. All right, continue. The United States of America have thought proper to change their government and institute a new one, agreeable to the Constitution, of which I have the honor herewith to enclose a copy of the time. Okay, that's right. The time necessarily employed in the arduous task and the disarrangements occasioned by so great though peaceable a revolution will apologize and account for your majesty's not having received those regularly advised marks of attention from the United States, which the friendship and magnanimity of your conduct toward them afforded reason to expect. The United States having unanimously appointed me to supreme executive authority in this nation, your majesty's letter of August 17th, 1788, which by reason of the dissolution of the late government remained unanswered has been delivered to me. I have also received the letters which your Imperial Majesty has been so kind as to write in favor of the United States to the Bashaws of Tunis and Tripoli, and I present to you the sincere acknowledgments and thanks of the United States for this important mark of your friendship for them. We greatly regret the hostile disposition of those regencies toward this nation who have never injured them is not to be removed on terms of our power to comply with. Within our territories, there are no mines, whether of gold or silver, and this young nation just recovering from the waste and dissolution of a long war have not as yet had time to acquire riches by agriculture and commerce. But our soil is bountiful and our people industrious and we have reason to flatter ourselves that we shall gradually become useful to our friends. The encouragement which your majesty has been pleased generously to give to our commerce with your, with your dominions, the punctuality which, which, with which you have caused the treaty with us to be observed and the just and generous measures taken in the case of Captain Proctor, make a deep impression on the United States and confirm their respect for an attachment to your Imperial Majesty. It gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity of assuring your Majesty that while I remain at the head of this nation, I shall not cease to promote every measure that may conduce to the friendship and harmony which so happily subsists between your empire and them, and shall esteem myself happy in every occasion of convincing your majesty of the high sense which in common with the whole nation, I entertain the magnanimity, wisdom, and benevolence of your majesty. May the almighty bless your imperial majesty, our great and magnanimous friend, with his constant guidance and protection. George Washington. Now, as you can see, that's at the foundation of operations here in North America. Why is that not commonly known? Well, because well people are not talking. But the major issue is to knock down any argument made by any trolls that are put out there that keep trying to convince these people that they're not Moors and that the United States is not an appendage of the Moorish Empire. And that these are not Moorish dominions. They're absolutely operating on Moorish dominions by virtue of treaty and constitution. And of course, they have breached that. And from a political perspective, it is logically in their interest being in breach and in subversion 
Now you understand the overthrow, the death of Abraham Lincoln, the suppression of original Article of Amendment 13 with its 20 sections, the violation of the nobility clause, and the branding system to remove the heirs of the estate off the platform. Now they have no protection. Once they agreed to be Negroes, Blacks, and Colors, and all of these brands that actually are put in place to steal their birthright. Are we clear? Clear. And this, of course, is what's going on. Now, And in order to maintain the corruption of the political platform, that's what the securities and the securitization is all about. That's the operative branding and selling of people without it looking like they're selling them. Are we clear? So the securitization where people think they're buying houses and they're actually sharecropping, where they think they have income that only applies to corporations and it's really the living, and then they tax you on it and then convert your labor to the corporate state, and the corporate states convert it to Westminster District London, and then London, through the Queen Elizabeth, splits it with the uh, Jesuit order, i.e. Opus Dei, and the uh, Popes of Rome is a 60-40 split. And this is the basis of your poverty and why the land is broke now and bankrupt, are we clear? Yeah. Under unum sanctum policy. So to keep you diverted, they keep you talking about colors and racism and prejudice and things like that, and it's actually you're on the stock market. Are we, are we clear? And they have, by generation, systematically draining your resources. And now it's gotten so bad that the world economy is about to collapse if they don't fix it. That's what's going on in the background. Are we clear? And because the rest of the world will no longer buy the UST bonds, and the snake is eating their own tail. The dragon is eating their own tail. This is where the Federal Reserve that was set up for the Jesuit order are printing fiat, buying their own bonds that nobody else will buy. And so it's only a matter of time where industry will come to a screeching halt. Are we clear? Because they cannot fund it anymore. Now keep in mind, in recent um, contemporary history, they have uh, misused and stolen uh, gold that was used to fund the operations at North America after the war fell. So the Chinese actually backed it to protect us. So for these last hundred or so years, the United States have been running off of Chinese gold. So in 1933, when um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt did the gold act and they started stealing your gold. The real deal is, is that they sold it to China to try to satisfy the debt because China was coming at them. Are we clear? This, was, this is really what took place in 1933. All right, so that gold was transferred to, to uh, China. And of course, that wasn't all of it. And so what's happening now is that the rest of the civilized world will not give them any more gold and they've been selling what is called fungible instrument 